question states that two amperes of electricity flow through molten calcium chloride for 30 minutes. To calculate the quantity of electrical charge that flows through the circuit, we have to use the formula Q is equal to IT. T is measured in seconds. So we have to convert the 30 minutes to seconds. So Q now has a value of 2 amperes times 30 times 60, which is 3,600 coulombs. Let me go to the right side of the board. To calculate the mass of calcium deposited, we have to consider how many Faraday's of charge flow through the circuit. So to deposit one mole of calcium um, atoms would require the passage of two Faraday's through the circuit. So 193,000 coulombs would deposit 40 grams of calcium. In the experiment, 3,600 coulombs of charge flow through the circuit. So the mass of calcium deposited can be found by simple cross multiplication and that would equate to 0.75 grams. Let's look at the next question. question requires a calculation of the mass of fluorine produced and the number of moles of fluorine produced when 4.32 times 10 to the power of 4 coulombs of charge flows to the circuit. To discharge one mole of fluorine molecules, it requires a passage of two Faraday's. Why is that so? Because we have two fluoride ions and each ion will give up one electron and of course you form one mole of fluorine gas. One mole of fluoride gas has a mass of 38 grams. Why 38 grams? Because it's 19 grams for one atom times two, right here, which would give you 38 grams. So 38 grams of fluorine will be produced when 193,000 coulombs of charge flows through the circuit. However, in the question, 4.32 times 10 to the power of four coulombs of charge flows through the circuit. So what mass of fluorine will be produced? Once you cross multiply, we'll get 8.51. So go ahead, do the calculations, and you should get this value. So in terms of the number of moles of fluorine being produced now, we can simply do a mass to mole conversion. And if we have one mole of fluorine having a mass of 38 grams, then what, what number of moles of fluorine now would have a mass of 8.51 grams? If we do the cross multiplication again, we'd get our answer to be 0.224 moles of fluorine. So that's the amount of fluorine gas that will be produced at the anode. Molten potassium hydride is being electrolyzed with a current of 0.25 amperes for 10 minutes. The products of electrolysis would be one, potassium metal, and two, hydrogen gas. Why is that so? Because in the electrolyte, we just have positively charged potassium ions and negatively charged hydride ions. There's nothing else there because the salt is molten. To represent the reaction at the cathode and the anode, look to the right of the board. The cathode reaction shows that one mole of potassium ions would accept one mole of electrons to form one mole of potassium atom, that metal. The anode reaction shows that one mole of hydride ions would produce one mole of electrons and half mole of hydrogen gas. Now because hydrogen does not exist as an atom, we can simply rewrite the anode equation as being two hydride ions, which would be two moles of hydride ions now, would produce one mole of hydrogen gas and in the process liberate two moles of electrons. So if we liberate two moles of electrons at the anode, then it goes to say that two moles of electrons should be received at the cathode. So that's why that second equation is written you now where R 2K plus would accept two moles of electrons to form two moles of potassium metal. Part C requires a calculation of the amount of electrical charge that flowed through the circuit for that time using that amount of current. So we can represent, uh, we can calculate that now using the formula Q is equal to IT, and of course T is, me is measured in seconds. So 0.25 amperes times 10 times 60 
would give you 150 coulombs. So take out your calculators, do the calculation yourself. So the very one mole of potassium metal requires the passage of one parity of electrical charge. So if we use 150 coulombs of electrical charge in the circuit, then 0.061 moles of potassium was liberated. Go ahead, do the calculations for yourself, prove yourself correct. So we'll look at our final question. Molten lead 2 bromide is being electrolyzed for 300 seconds using a current of 0.25 amperes. Because the salt is molten, the only thing present in the electrolyte would be lead ions and bromide ions. So at the anode, bromine vapor would be produced, and at the cathode, lead, the metal of course, would be produced. The anode equation can be represented by two bromide ions or two moles of bromide ions will form one mole of bromine gas and of course give up two moles of electrons in the process, whereas the cathode equation would show that two moles of electrons are being added to one mole of lead two ions to form lead the metal. I'm going to go to the right side of the board. Over here, we can calculate the quantity of electrical charge that flows through the circuit with a current of 0.25 amperes for a time of 300 seconds. So you do the multiplication and we find that 75 coulombs of charge flow through the circuit. Part E of the question is asking us to calculate the volume of bromine vapor that will be produced under those experimental conditions. So from the annual equation, you can see that two moles of electrons would be liberated once bromide ions go there. So that is equivalent to 193,000 coulombs of charge now being produced to liberate one mole of bromine vapor. One mole of bromine vapor would occupy a volume of 24 dm cubes. So if 75 coulombs now flow through the circuit, what volume of bromine vapor will be produced? So we just simply have to cross multiply, and once we do so, we'll get 0 0.00933 dm cubes of bromine vapor being produced. So that's how we approach these types of questions, and that's it for now. If it is that you want me to explain anything else, don't be afraid to leave a comment, or if I teach you in this school, then of course ask the question in class. Alright, so you've been learning science with Mrs. Stevens Massey. Bye bye, see you for the next video.